everybody and welcome back to The Hobby Musician. You're joining us today as we start a brand new mini-series, which happens to be a channel first, and more than that, it's a personal first for me. Now this project kind of started a few weeks ago when I was uh, just doing some regular practice. I was using my main five string bass, which I got here, and on that particular day, I was really trying to dial in a specific tone. I had a, a sound in my head and I was adjusting all of the options on the bass and I was changing amp settings and effects. And I just couldn't quite get the specific tone that I was looking for. And so the idea popped in my head that occasionally I've thought about experimenting with installing different pickups. Now, tons of different companies offer um, all sorts of options that can really drastically change how your bass sounds. So I started thinking, maybe this could be something I do for the channel. Um, I'll buy some pickups and show you all how to swap them in. Well, then the idea hit me. Sure, I could buy some pickups. But you know, we've done projects in the past here on the channel. We've built entire guitars from a kit. We've done all sorts of DIY type projects. So I started thinking, why not make my own pickups? Then I needed to do some homework. I've never done that before. So that's why this is a personal first for me. And in the next couple of weeks after I had the idea, I started doing my homework and I immediately found that there are kits you can buy um, with instructions that'll walk you through the whole process of building and winding and installing your own pickups. Well, I then decided to take this one step further and sure, you could buy a kit, but I decided I wanted to do everything from literal scratch. So this mini series is gonna be broken up into how we can accomplish the various parts of the pickups as well as the construction and installation. Now, if you do this for yourself, you're gonna learn very quickly that pickups are kind of simple in their construction. You need, number one, magnets. The magnet pieces are gonna be what the strings vibrate over and essentially they're the, the I don't know, principal component in how you generate signal. Number two, you have to wind those magnets very carefully and very specifically with wire. So that whole portion is gonna be an episode all into itself. And third, you may not think about this part if you, if you do purchase a kit, but the third kind of main area of pickup building and design is all of the housing um, components themselves. The actual physical shapes, um, the, the bobbins that you end up putting the pole pieces in and everything that fits inside these enclosures, those all could come prefabricated. But what we're going to do today is we are going to dive back into our experience earlier on this channel with 3D modeling and 3D printing. And when I said we're going to do this from scratch, we are going to do this from scratch. So for us in this project, the first thing we're going to do is we need to model and 3D print the enclosures and all of the structural components that we're going to need for this project. So to set out to do this, one of the first things I had to do was I had to get very careful measurements. If you see right here, the whatever pickups we end up building need to fit exactly into the holes that are already routed out in this uh, base body. So I sat down, you can see here, um, with my digital calipers and I took very copious notes. I was measuring every single dimension, not just the, the length and the width, but I also needed to measure how far in these little indents go with the screws. I needed to measure how far apart the center of the screw holes were, how far down these indents went. And in addition to that, I even went onto the manufacturer's websites and tried to look up and, and um, gather even more dimensions than the ones I could, I could physically get, just so I had a complete idea. As I was doing that, I ended up being able to create this kind of cheat sheet of all of the specific dimensions that are gonna go into our eventual design and build for these pickups. So as I said before, not only did I need to get all of the dimensions of the outside, 
One of the things that's very important is on the inside of our pickups, we need to know exactly where to place our magnets so that they match up with the strings that we're trying to kind of have directly over them. So I took lots of measurements of the strings themselves, how thick the strings were, how far apart the centers of each of the strings are from each other, um, and how far they are from the inside, the left or the right side of these pickups. And that gave us all of the measurements we were going to need to now do our 3D modeling. So I'm going to get the camera switched up and I'm going to show you the screen of how we built those components in our software um, before we then ship them off uh, to get them 3D printed. So hang tight. I'll be back in a second. Okay, everybody, you can see here we've got the screen pulled up. And don't worry, if you're brand new to the idea of 3D modeling or 3D printing, the good news is there's tons of software out there that you can choose from. Now, you're going to see the ones that we're that I'm using today just happens to be the program Onshape. But there are, as I said, different companies offer different software options, including kind of just the options for 3D printing. And if you're interested in starting any of that, I'll even put some of affiliate links down below this video that you can check out some 3D printers. Um, and don't forget, on YouTube, you can find all of the tutorials that you would ever need in order to make something like this. Now to get started, I will say one of the benefits of us trying to, to model and kind of make our um, particular pickups is that they're basically giant rectangles and modeling software you can kind of see here as I move this around in three dimensions a lot of the tools that you start out with are regular shapes so we come down here I'm gonna um, show the main cover that we have and you can see I'll try to zoom in a little bit you can see that all of those dimensions we saw earlier in that time lapse I just put into this I started with a rectangle and then you see on the front I've got my um, indents where those screws are going to, uh, the mounting screws are going to hold it. And then if I rotate this, you can see on all the corners, I tried to round it off so it wouldn't be sharp. It'd be, you know, kind of cosmetically good looking. And if we flip all the way around to the back, you can see that I also hollowed it out. I created essentially a second rectangle and then scooped out the inside. Um, but leaving, I left, you know, the areas around those two mounting screws so that it'd be structurally sound. The last thing about this cover is you can see down here, I also needed a cutout or a, a space for the wires to come out. Once we get um, all the guts wired up inside, we need to have those wires come out um, to be able to wire into the rest of the circuit. Now, if I flip this back around to the front and um, kind of zoom back out a little bit, I'll show you the next thing that I did was I made a back plate. Okay, so we have the main cover on top, but we need something. We don't want it to just be open on the back. So if you turn around here, I made a very thin uh, rectangle of the exact same dimensions with those two mounting screw holes in there so that when it prints out, we can kind of see I can take that back plate and I can, um, once everything's in and I've got the wires out, I can actually glue or affix that back plate on there and still have the holes for the mounting screws uh, to work there. So let me flip this back up. The next, actually, you know what? We'll use the quick tools. Here we go. There's our, our front. Uh, gets us really quickly to the front. The last things that we have here are the bobbins. And so if I, if I zoom out here, you can see up here, oops, too close too far. You can see up here that I have this um, piece. It kind of looks like almost Swiss cheese at this point. And these bobbins are what are going to eventually sandwich our magnetic pole pieces. So you see all of the holes down the middle of this piece are going to line up with those vertical bars. And when we put them in, you can see if I rotate this back, this is where I used all of the dimensions on exactly where each of the five strings are. I want a magnet on either side of the string. So as it vibrates, Vibrates, it goes back and forth in there. And so you can see I've got the these two are going to be um, I made this so that we're looking at it ver from the top down. So this is going to be the B, the low B string. It's going to perfectly, well, it should perfectly hover right in between those. So as it vibrates back and forth, those two magnets will pick it up. Then if you go to the next two, that'll be the E string, then the A string as it goes there. Now you see there's a couple more holes. The two holes that you see on this side are going to be where we put little metal uh, grommets or little metal eyelets. 
and that is where the copper wire for the whole coil is going to um, affix. Um, we have our ground wire and our, our signal wire, so we need two places. So we're going to tie off and solder the wire uh, both at the start and the end of the wind on those two places, and they're going to actually wind, we're going to kind of tie them around these curvatures here. The last thing that we put um, into this build is a, um, actually we'll, we'll get closer on here, is a top bobbin. And you can see here it's almost identical. It's It has all the same holes that go down the middle just like the one we saw earlier, but it doesn't have the two extra holes for the grommets because we don't need them on this. But it does have a little indent here. And I'll tell you what, it's actually literally just cosmetic. I needed to be able to have, these are almost identical, but the holes are slightly shifted because they're not quite, um, the, the, the dimensions where the strings are and where the bodies are, there is a left side and a right side, and they're not identical. So I needed to put a little visual cue for myself on which side was the left and which was the right. So I remembered that I modeled these looking at them from the top. So the little curvature here is the last little piece. It just tells me that's the left side. So when I'm looking at it, um, I don't get confused. Okay, so zooming back out here, you see these are the actual housing pieces um, that, that compose kind of that one area of building pickups. This would be essentially what would come with any of the kits that you find um, in a lot of uh, companies, but we're going to print them off. Now, regular viewers of the channel know that we have partnered with Stevenson University and with Dr. Neil Rothman in the past. He's the Biomedical Engineering Program Director, and he's helped us out with these uh, projects because he has a really um, high-end 3D printer in his design lab. So I'm going to take all these models, export them, ship them off to the Biomedical Engineering Lab. So the next time you see me, I'm going to be there. We're going to get these, um, these pieces printed out and get them back. Back to the studio to continue on with this build so um, it may be a little maybe a couple of days or so before I get there but the next time I see you we'll be in the lab and we'll get this project printed All right, everybody, we made it. We're back here in the Biomedical Engineering Lab at Stevenson University, and we've got the 3D printer all set up. Now you can see all of those models that we made back at the studio are now loaded into the printer. We've got a, a whole job all programmed, and all the pieces that we need are gonna be printed out in one batch. So all that's left to do is to get this started. So I'm gonna hit print, and you're gonna start to see everything heat up, and what we're gonna do now is we're just going to switch over to a time lapse so you can enjoy watching this print out at a much faster pace. When we're all done with the pieces, we're going to pull them off here, uh, take them back to the studio. So the next time you see me, we're going to be back in the studio ready to start winding and finishing this project. So hope you enjoy and I'll see you back in a bit. everybody we made it back we uh, got our print job all finished up uh, we're back here in the studio and the last couple of things that I want to just talk about are to kind of tell you how things went as you saw from the time lapse it kind of takes a long time for these print jobs to to finalize but when they come out we have all of our pieces now one thing I'll point out about the differences in color you can see here this is the main cover and um, on the back side, we have that cavity that we were, you know, careful about modeling to make sure all the dimensions were correct. And there, uh, right down here in the little, uh, is our gap for the wires and everything. You can see now the cosmetic, just the color. It's kind of this shiny black um, color. But if I flip it over to the front, you can see it's a little more ashy gray and there's a kind of a crisscross pattern. 
Well, what happens is in these jobs, whenever you're printing objects, you have to pick certain orientations. And the most efficient orientation to print something like this is to print it face down so that the printer doesn't have to fill the entire thing with scaffolding material. And what that means is the bottom face then needs to be kind of lifted. So there's a, a very thin layer of scaffolding that gets printed out to kind of keep this face uh, up off the printing surface so that it's more easily to, to, to remove. What that means is then there's gonna be a little tiny bit of crisscrossing that I just took, the gray color comes from me, I just took a little bit of sandpaper and sanded it smooth. So to the touch, it's smooth, but you can see that it's a little gray. So what I plan to do after this video is done, I might come back to this and maybe put a very thin coat of some gl glossy black paint just to rematch the glossiness of the sides and the back uh, for that. So it's completely cosmetic, but the dimensions, I took my calipers after this job was done, I measured everything, it's exactly the dimensions we need and it's exactly the dimensions of what we're gonna be replacing it with. So to go through the rest of these pieces, you can see here we've got our back piece, this is our back plate that when we finish and we, we load the, the cover with our wound pickup, uh, the back plate's gonna fit on just like that. You can see that um, our screw holes and everything line up perfectly. And then moving on to our last two pieces, these are the two bobbins that we were talking about. The bottom bobbin is the one that has these two extra holes where we're gonna put our grommets and then all of the, the um, holes down the middle of both bobbins line up perfectly. So when they're sandwiched, actually this way, when they're sandwiched on top of each other, those Alnico um, rods are gonna slide through and they're gonna line up perfectly. So it's gonna create this nice sandwiched uh, situation that we're gonna be able to wind our copper wire. And then that whole thing, once it gets wound and soldered, fits into our cover just like that. So there you have it. Our first step in building our pickups is complete. We have all of the housing material, so we're ready to move on to magnets and wire. And if you want to continue this series, click the link at the top and that'll take you right to the next episode. Well, I hope you got something out of this. And as always, I want to thank you for watching. And until next time, play on, my friends. Play on.